Hello, thank you for tuning into the Walk in Truth Radio Network broadcast. We hope that you will be inspired, motivated, and encouraged by today's message. Let's listen in on the exciting speaker for today's encouraging words. Chapter 5 of 1 Peter. And as we've been dealing with suffering, uh, i just been getting deeper and deeper into that. And and I'm studying this this doctor, and I will it'll be you'll hear that on on the uh, encouraging words. You you probably hear me talk about this again. Ants, you know, automatic negative thoughts that go through our mind, and a lot of times we suffer because we have automatic negative thoughts. Say automatic negative thoughts, automatic negative thoughts. that go through our mind. Okay, and that causes us to suffer. Now, you say, Pastor, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is this, and I understood what the doctor was saying, and that gives me understanding of, you know, when the Bible says something, it's science is catching up to what the Bible has already been said. Now, watch this. He said, this doctor said, this psychologist said that in our minds we have thoughts, and sometimes we have automatic negative thoughts based upon how we were raised, what we have been through, what we eat, our environment, okay? All thoughts that we have are not valid. Meaning that when we have automatic negative thoughts, I'm not too good, I'm not too pretty, I'm not, I'm not smart enough, I can't. All these are automatic because you really don't have no proof that you can. You follow what I'm saying? You, It just comes into your mind. Some of you have said that. Well, I can't do that. Give me the proof that you can. You have none because it's an automatic thought. You've attached yourself to something that's not real. That's why the Bible requires us to renew our minds. Because we are in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. So what is this mind? We have to realize who we really are in Christ Jesus. So when we get the automatic negative thoughts, the ants, Then what we do is weigh the reality of who we are in Christ Jesus versus the unreality of the negative thoughts. That's powerful because what it's telling me is a lot of us, a lot of you have a lot more to do for God because you're still here. But what's stopping you is your automatic negative thoughts. I can't. I'm not good enough. I'm looking at other people trying to be like them. No, I've always and and you know, this is nothing new to you. I've always encouraged you to be like you are in Christ Jesus. That you're important to the body. But if you keep having these automatic ants in your mind, you have to decide that those are not valid. Because that's not who you are. You're not an underachiever. I don't care if you didn't graduate from high school and you didn't go to college. What, What they got to do with learning? What does that have to do with your ability to learn? Nothing. Some of the smartest people I've ever met in my entire life have been people who have no college degree, barely have education, barely have this. But they, they I met some of the smartest and smartest people with ideas and dreams and, 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 and philosophies. They don't have all of that. But one thing they do, they keep trying They don't let people stop them. They don't let the ants of their past infect their future. And I like that. Automatic ants. Ants be everywhere. You know, by the time you realize they're there, there's a thousand of them. See, one, you don't really pay no attention to. One day you wake up and there's a cloud and you're like, what is that dark spot? And it's nothing but ants. Well, the same thing affects your mind. One ain't the problem. It's when you build on the ants. You get this thought. Why well, I'm not good enough. Then you get another thought. Why well, I'm not educated. You get another thought. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. 
or it goes into negative thoughts of I got to like Bible study. I got to go to Bible study. No, you get to go to Bible study. I want to go to Bible study. See, I change it from a, a negative thought because when, when we say we got to, that's always negative. Not I love coming to Bible study. See, your whole mental attitude changes when your verbiage changes. So I've been on this kick. So we're going to talk about leadership today because it's kind of funny how, as, as we suffer. Uh, we go into leadership and leadership is important. And I told you that story in the beginning to show you, you can have good intentions when you're following a leader, but you have to really understand your the intentions of your leader. Is your leadership, and we talk about Christian leadership, has one purpose, a five-fold ministry is to edify the body until we all grow up into the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, period. If I'm not doing that, if somebody's not leading you to Christ in every aspect of their ministry, along with life coach skill counseling, that's great, but that's secondary. Okay? Like I'm gonna help Carol and do what she wanna do with her spices and stuff. And her kid and her, yeah, that ain't gonna do with Jesus. That's business. <laughs> and it's all right. But that ain't the main reason why I'm here for her. That's that's icing on the cake that I can help her with. But if Carly called me to ask her what her plumbing, she got the wrong one. She need to call Marvin. <laughs> that's another thing we sign to our pastors that we shouldn't do. They don't know everything. Amen. A lot of y'all know stuff I don't even know. And, and 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 you've learned it. See, it doesn't it doesn't make a difference. You've learned it. So learning is a process. It's not the you know, getting degrees is fine. Don't give me, I'm, I will never put that down because I have not But that doesn't necessarily mean that I understand some stuff because really getting a degree mostly is just repeating what was said to you. And that's how you get the good grades. They don't really pay you to think. They don't really teach you to think. They teach you to follow and swallow. Okay. You'd have to, you because, because, as you move up in the degrees, then they require you to think. But if you haven't been taught from the gr cradle to have a thinking mind, a discerning mind, a questionable mind, ask questions. I always tell you, ask questions of the scripture. Say, well, well, God, why are you writing this right now? OK, so we're going to do this with Peter. OK, open up your Bibles. First Peter, chapter five. I'll pray. Lord, bless us for this Bible study. Continue to teach us how to grow in the knowledge of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by and through your word under the power of the Holy Spirit. All right. Uh, Sister Jackie, read uh, verse 5. First Peter. What'd you say, Jack? What you got? You ain't got your Bible? No, I haven't. I just have to get my glasses. Okay, get your glasses. First Peter, First Peter chapter 5. I want you just to read verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 and 2. Okay. So I exhaust the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Not Five no. Not no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Three. Go ahead. Not domineering over those in your in, in your charge, but being examples to the flock. Okay. So we have Peter first identify himself self as a fellow elder. So he's making himself equal to the people he's talking to, and he's talking to leaders. Okay. He's telling us shepherd the flock. Some of your Bibles may say feed the flock. Okay. When you shepherd the flock, that means you care for them in every way that's necessary to make them healthy. You care for them in every way to make them healthy. You don't shepherd a flock by, by fleecing the flock. Amen. You shepherd the flock by caring what they eat, what they drink, what they hear, what they smell, and what they see. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. Okay? In John, it says he's the bread of life. 
He's the living water. So as we lead people to Christ, as your leaders lead people to Christ, as you lead people to Christ, you are shepherding the flock. Now, the key thing to this is your disposition or your attitude of your leaders as they shepherd the flock. As, as she just read, you don't do it out of compulsion. Now, that Greek word for compulsion really means you don't do it to stress them out. <laughs> you don't do it to stress them out. You don't lead them by stressing them. Now, there's a difference between stressing you and pushing you. There's a difference between stressing you and encouraging you. There's a difference between getting you out of your comfort zone to do the things of God, as we read in First Peter, that it behooves us to suffer and do well than just making you do stuff to keep you confused and frustrated. Have you ever been under a supervisor who really just got on your nerves or you really knew they were just messing with you all the time? Yeah. 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 Like you doing your job, yeah. Yeah. but they are so bent on exercising what? Their authority yeah. over you. They just want to get on your nerves. Okay? That's by compulsion. A good leader never wants to exercise authority through that means. Some do. A lot do. I would challenge that they're not really leaders. This is what I would tell you. They've been given a title, but they're not leaders. And that's another problem with the church right now. We have, we've over-titled the people. To whereas the title doesn't match the level of ability and leadership, the gifted in, in leadership. Just because a person, see, because what we do automatically is when a person gets the title, pastor, prophet, teacher, whatever you want to call it, apostle, we automatically in our psychological mind give them a level of competency, authority, and ability without them opening their mouth. And by the time they open their mouth, it's too late. We done been sucked in. Okay? It's like being sucked into a black hole. But the challenge is that when we, when, 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 when the, when we do this thing with leadership, the leader needs to understand, I've been given a title, now, now what's next? Every pastor that's elevated to pastor or called to pastor, when they are affirmed in it by the people and they have a following, they should ask, what should I do to do what? Feed these people. Shepherd the people. What did Jesus tell Peter? Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Shepherd my sheep. Take care of my sheep until I return. Because you're going to be judged on how well you have shepherded the sheep. And there's a, there's a greater punishment uh, Go to James, I think it's James 3 and 1, uh, Sister Lueda. I think it's James 3 and 1. Go to James 3 and 1 and read it. Uh-huh. Because, see, you have to understand, in you going out telling people about Jesus, you kind of held to the same standard. But we talk about leadership, so let's just deal with that. Okay, the leadership is going to be held to a higher standard than those who are not in leadership, okay? What does James 3 and 1 say? I think it's 3 and 1. It says, my brethren, let not many of you become teachers. There you go. Knowing that ye shall receive a stricter judgment. So it's warning you. See, what you have to do is next thing you know, okay, I need to feed the sheep, but I need to be warned that if I don't do this in a correct manner that leads people to Christ and edifies and grows the body, I'm going to be judged for that. I'm going to have a stricter judgment because I'm representing Christ and I'm leading people astray. I'm leading people to follow me. It's all about me. And it's all about, and this is what how it could you get, see, I can make it all about me, but you think I'm talking about you. We could talk about ants in a way that glorifies it's all about you. I'm going to talk about ants in a way that glorifies God. I want you to get rid of the automatic negative thoughts. And, and what did I say? Let this mind be in you, this Christ Jesus. The secular world takes it as now you can go out and do everything you want to do. 
Okay, and I get that. That's fine. But we're called to a higher standard. Our higher standard is how we come into revelation of the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are growing and becoming like him every day. And his focus was on being obedient to the Father. Just like our focus as we get more spiritual minded is being obedient to him and living out our lives in a way, in a character, in a discipline that magnifies who he is in us. That's what's walking in the spirit is. It ain't all this floating around and losing your mind. Nowhere in the Bible tells you to separate your mind. It all works together. But those Middle Eastern thoughts, those witchcraft thoughts, those thoughts that are anti-Christ, that are another gospel, get you into this nirvana. And you want to portray that to people. You are on dangerous ground then because what you're doing, you want the people to be like you. And the Bible says, you can't be greater than your teacher, but you could be like your teacher. So you better be careful who you're following. Because Amen. 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 regardless of what you think, you guys have some of me in you. And I pray <laughs> that it's this and not this. I pray that it's the word that you have that I've been teaching you. Me, the flesh, in my flesh there's nothing. No good thing. I got clay feet just like all of you, but I see the growth. I see the fruit. So I'm always concerned. There was a time I was worried because I knew that I was pushing up against all that you had been taught before and was breaking it down, chipping away at your house that you had counted on for years. that really had been successful for you. But hey, you, when you know better, you do better. Okay. And obviously, this is what I'll give you credit for. In your heart of hearts, when the Bible says you don't know what to pray for, in your heart of hearts, God interceded, the Holy Spirit interceded in your half, half and said, they really want to know the truth. So I'm going to send you a teacher. God will never leave those who sincerely seek him ignorant. Amen. Amen. Never. Amen. He will never leave you ignorant. So being a leader is important. Now, we're going to look at some other passages with the Jews because, again, what I want to stress is a lot of leadership leads under this, you got to do what I say. Versus, as we saw in the scripture, you're supposed to be what? An example. So if I'm leading like, do what I say, guess what you're going to do to the next person come through the door? Do what I say. But if I lead as a servant, the person come through the door, you're going to look to serve them. That's one reason why I walk in truth is blessed. We are a loving servant church. We're not a dominating, you got to do what we say church. Yes, we have our own little tradition. And traditions are fine. Because I don't think I'm going to have to say this till the day I die. Traditions are fine as long as the traditions don't supersede the word of God. Amen. Every church has its traditions. Traditions help keep order. But we don't look at the traditions that we do as, oh, that's being holy. No, that's just good. It's only holy if the heart is holy. And, and God judges the heart. A heathen can come here and do what we do because we don't have many traditions. And they be far from God as far as the east is from the west. But a saint can come in and do the same thing and have an experience with God in Revel. I, 2021, I want y'all to start having a revel revelatory experiences with God, meaning that you have deeper revelation of through his word, not through floating, but through his word. Okay? And this suffering is the way because you're going to have to suffer to get to the revelation. It's not going to come naturally. So I have to suffer through it first, in a sense, because I'm your leader. And I'm trying to take you guys into that level of suffering because you can't Daphne preached about all you need is the Holy Spirit and love. But you can't appreciate the love until you appreciate the wrath. Right. So, true. so you got to know more than just Holy Spirit and love. I get what she was saying. Because Paul said, hey, if you don't have love, you don't have, you don't have anything. But this is not about having love. This is about appreciating love. I don't appreciate Pleasure 
unless I really know what pain is. Mm. We don't appreciate salvation unless we know condemnation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't appreciate righteousness unless you understand unrighteousness. You can't appreciate good leadership until you experience bad. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And, uh, all right. So, at this point, like I say, we have to learn to be examples. Uh, Sister Louetta, go to, uh, we can go to Matthew. Okay. And we're going to see what Jesus said about being a leader. And we're going to start at Matthew 20. Matthew 20. Tw I mean, 2020. And this is where uh, James and John's James and John's mother came to Jesus and asked, could they sit in the position of authority? One on his left, one on his right. Now, you have to remember, James and John were relatives. So his mother felt like she could come and, and push up on Jesus. She knelt before him. She bowed before him. But she was asking something to put them in leadership position. OK. And there's nothing wrong. And see, the, the, the problem is this shows you something too. In in the in God's economy, an economy means just the way God does things, you don't seek leadership. He appoints you. Okay. He doesn't seek leader. You you don't seek, he appoints you. You don't get to make yourself pastor. Okay? That's part of the fivefold ministry. Okay? So if you follow God's economy, he said, your gift will make room for you. Yes, Too many people are being ordained pastors and they don't have a following. How are you going to be a leader and not have nobody following you? All these sub-pastors, executive pastor, crier pastor, okay, they give themselves a name. They appoint themselves. <laughs> One thing Bishop says: some some called, some went, some called, some got sent, and some went. Meaning that that this perpetual thing. And a lot of churches, what they do is give people these ministerial titles, minister, just to hang on to them, and it never works. You know why? Because once you decide to give someone a, a position of authority that is not ready, doesn't deserve it, not appointed to do it, not gifted in it, what ends up happening is you automatically mess their head up because they think they arrived. And now what you got a person who's, who is a, is, a, is a child with a loaded gun. Mm. And all they can do dangerous. is dangerous. And then they're the ones who tend to lead with their title. Yeah. Yeah. And we all have been there where we met people Whereas, if you don't call them pastor or bishop or apostle, they ain't going to talk to you for real. Ain't going to look at you crazy till you finally correct yourself. What, the, huh? what you call me? You already know. Oh, I forgot. What, 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 hey, what are you today? What's your, what title you want me to call you today? I have no problem with Minister Sutton, Pastor Sutton, Dr. Sutton, James Sutton, Jim, brother, because that's who I... It makes it, that makes no difference to me because y'all love me, and because you love me, that's the greatest respect. I'm your brother in Christ. That's the greatest bond. We are brothers and sisters. The rest of that stuff is useless. And bishop is not a a God given title. Bishop is a title appointed. By the fivefold to other people to do administrative stuff. I'll explain that to you later. But bishop, bishop is mentioned is 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 for the offer is good to one offer a bishop. Well, the only person to be a bishop is a pastor. Okay, so that's that's a a level of man made tradition inside the body of Christ. Okay. But how you gonna be a bishop and don't have no you don't have more than one church? I mean, that's the standard we set. Bishops normally have more than one following. But you're a bishop and you and you got two people. But see, this is the thing. You do that to a person, and I'm saying you it's wrong for you to do that to a person because what they end up doing, they have to leave from their title. You put them in a position where they are what? They ain't got no following, so they got to leave with their ego. Yeah, they have to leave with I'm I'm this. 
because they don't have you guys telling other people who they are. You follow what I'm saying? When God said, let your gift make room for you, even the Bible says, let somebody else blow your horn. Well, if you don't have any followers, you ain't got nobody blowing your horn. So you got to toot your own because you got the title. But see, see how we do that? See, that's where, and then that comes to the next, the, the, the other passage of scripture where it talks about that in the last days, they not want to hear the sound doctrine. The people will raise up teachers that tell them what they want to hear. And the pastor is, is, don't realize that those three people that decided to do follow him is really doing it because he massages them. And as soon as he don't massage them right, guess what? They go. Or he makes the mistake of making a whole, everybody congregation, of, hold up, 90% of the congregation got minister titles. Okay? So when he don't do what they want, they got the license now. They gone. And when they come to land in a church like ours, where I just, okay, you say you're a minister. But I might grandfather you in just because I don't feel like dealing with it. But, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I I'm like, okay, <laughs> but, but, but the point I'm trying to make, see, don't, the point I'm trying to make is this, the point I'm trying to make is this, I'm trying to make that sometimes the people end up messing up the, the leader because they want a leader not to lead them, but they want a leader to validate their mess. And I read the scripture where I can't say exactly what it was. Men would get themselves titles. Yeah. Because they want the support from God anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, you broke it down really good. Yeah. That's true. I did beat that. Yeah. Men would get themselves titles. Or in church, they politic like it's an election. That's why elections are not good in churches. Because nowhere in the Bible do you see anybody getting elected. That's a man made thing. Okay. And see, we think about it. if you got an ignorant electorate electing a, a leader, if they ignore the scripture, they can only they, they're more they can easily elect a person just ignorant as them in scripture. Because then they pick a person they like. OK, that's why it's important for the pew people to be just as versed in the word of God as the pastor. Amen. As much as they can be. And, and it doesn't mean that you can't be. That's like I told you, you can learn. You ain't got to be, had no title. Like I tell the women in the church, you don't need a title to preach and teach the word of God. Nowhere in the Bible did he give a woman a title. You didn't need one. You always had a special place with God. He was the first one that God came to and told that he was the, he was the Christ, the woman at the well. Yeah. She didn't get no title. Rahab is still called a harlot in Hebrew. She didn't get no title, but she's in the Hall of Fame of Faith. But I digress. Okay, let's go to uh, Matthew 20. Start at 20 and 20. Now we got the scene. They want positions of authority and leadership. Go ahead. Okay. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. And he said to her, what do you wish? She said to him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand and the other on your left, in your kingdom. So, so that's authority position. You got the king in the middle. If somebody sits on his right, somebody sits on his left, that's authority positions. Go ahead. But Jesus answered and said, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? Now, see, what Jesus did is set the standard for, for a leader. Are you willing? You don't know what you want. You asking, thinking it's this glorious thing. But are you willing to drink from the cup that I'm about to drink from? So let's go to, you know, let's think about Peter. Stay where you at. But let's think about Peter. That's what Peter is saying. Did we just read? He said he suffered and seen the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Well, where did he see the glory? On the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. He said, we've actually watched the suffering. We participate in the suffering and we are not participating in the suffering that God promised that we would participate in. Even Paul, he told Paul, how much you going to suffer for my sake? Are you willing as a leader to suffer and drink of that cup that Jesus drank from if called to do so? That don't sound like a person talking about do what I say because I'm the pastor. That sounds like a person that's really about to give up his life and pick up his cross and follow Jesus. Okay? So she's at, and he, he's, so he set the bar real low and high at the same time. Or, or you, can you do that? That'd be a good question to ask your pastor one time. You know, if you give, go somewhere else, ask him this question. Are you willing to suffer like Jesus suffered? Are you willing to carry the cup? And they ask you, what do you mean? Then you know you ain't supposed to be there. <laughs> if, they, if they have no idea what you're talking about, that means that they've never considered the, what they must go through to be with who they play, their title carries, okay? All right, go ahead, keep reading. Okay. And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. They said to him, we are able. So he said to them, you will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give. But it is though but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my father. So that, that proves my point. Yeah. Yeah. That level of leadership is not something that the even Jesus could give. He said, they had, you had to be prepared by the Father for that. You had to be prepared by the Father for that. And you're going to be, and you're preparing to suffer. Suffer and survive. This ain't about you having people running behind you and arm bearing and clearing your clothes and carrying your water and carrying your Bible. <laughs> that don't look like suffering to me. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. You know, I, I, that's why that foolishness has to stop. Because a lot of people get caught. Because see, what, again, because you do that, you got other people who, who are aspire to do that. Mm -hmm. that's true. I want to be the armor bearer. I want to sit through the pastor. Gotta, I wanna, when I be the pastor, I want to be just like him. I want to have five <laughs> armor bearers. I want to have somebody wipe the sweat off my face where I preach. I want somebody to run up here and give me some water, carry my briefcase. I mean, I, I've seen it so ridiculous, and this is a true story. This is a true story. Where this bishop, I'm going to leave him nameless, got undressed in the room where he posed a dress in after he was finished preaching. And he had some men take a blow dryer to him. I'm going to leave it like that. And he's sitting there going. So, that's, that's ridiculous. But think about this. The people who are doing this think they're really doing something that's godly. When they really being bamboozled and led astray. Okay? I feel for them because they're sincere, but they're sincere. They're, they're being you. They're, people use your sincerity when it comes to godly things. What they got to do with God and you sitting there doing that? You're not taking care of, and I hate this word, mans of God. M-A-N-S God. What does that mean? But a lot of my foreign brothers and sisters address me that way, and I understand that's a cultural thing for them. And it's going to take a minute. But, but my point is, you don't even have to address me as that when you talk, when you're corresponding with me. Because it doesn't, it, it makes my radar go up, not down. You know, I don't look at it like, okay, that's great. They love me. No, I look at, okay, you're trying to scam me. Okay. <laughs> You know, I do. I ain't no sense of me lying. I do. I take it in a different direction. All right, go ahead. Verse 24. Okay. No, hold on. Verse, where we at? 24 23? Okay. 24. 24. And when the, ten, when the ten heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers. So in other words, think about this. They got mad <laughs> because they are just, they just like the rest of them. But somebody intervened and politic on their behalf. To try to get them in a place that they think they deserve too. Their mother. Their mother used their mama. Okay. 
but but so many so they use their mama to try to talk to Jesus. They didn't talk to Jesus. They he, they use their mama. That's another thing. When you got leadership who do a whole bunch of politicking and have people politicking for them, be careful. Be careful. Because they are more after the title and the position more than the work and the suffering. Nobody wants to suffer. But we suffer because we're called to a higher calling that we are assured by God that we can endure the suffering of, of whatever. People slandering us, people talking against us, our health problems, problems with the flock. One thing Pastor Sims told me, and I don't know if I told y'all this, but Pastor Sims told me this. He said, think about a shepherd. And when a shepherd, when they put all the sheep in the sheep pen, just think about this room, a big old sheep pen. And let's say 10 different shepherds put their sheep in here and they're all for the night for protection. When the morning comes and it's time for each shepherd to grab his sheep, they would go into the sheep pen and they would walk amongst the sheep. And they would talk or call their name or, or sing a song. And the sheep would smell them, see them, and hear them. Okay. Because the Bible says, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Okay? Now watch this. He said something to me that I thought was cute, but it's true. A real shepherd, think about a sheep pen. What the sheep been doing all night? What'd you say? Pooping. A real shepherd has to walk through the poop of the sheep. And is willing to. Versus you walk through their poop. A real shepherd walks through the mess of the of, of the sheep, regardless of how messy it is. Not for selfish gain, not for me to gain a one up on you that I can use it against you, but because the good shepherd walked through my poop. You see what I'm saying? That's the difference. Keep reading. Verse, verse 25. Mm -hmm. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. But stop right there. You know that the rulers of the Gentile lord it over, the, over them. That's that same kind of faith. They, they, they do it by compulsion over them. Mm -hmm. They do it overbearing over them. They lead because they got a title. Okay? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And those who are great exercise authority over them. So those who, who, who appear to be great exercise authority over them, exercise oppression over them, exercise the right to rule them. Mm -hmm. I got a right to be your pastor. You have to follow me. I'm your pastor. You need to do what I say. I'm the man's of God. Mm -hmm. But what Jesus say? Read. Yet it shall not be so among you. It shall not be so. A lot of pastors don't know this. When I bring this up to them, they, they act like they don't see this. It says, it is a maybe. It says, it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great, whoever would be great among you must be your servant. Now, how do we get this? And we got this situation going on in church today. How do you read this and read what we just read and Peter and this and don't understand that something's wrong? Something's wrong. There's nothing wrong with helping your pastor. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, you know, you see me up here preaching, you want to bring me some water, that's fine. But that's not a prerequisite. I'm not, you know, you know, that's not something that that's your job to bring me water while I'm going through service. It's not your job to carry my Bible. You know, I carry my own Bible. You know, I don't want an entourage per se when I go some places. There's nothing wrong. And when I invite y'all to come, I invite y'all to come for the service. I'm not come. I'm not inviting y'all to come in like, okay, they're going to see my entourage. And from but no seeing my entourage, they're going to know how important I am. I'm only important by how I preach and teach. It's what I say that's most important. It's not who, it's not even, and it's the quality of the people following you. I got good quality people that God has given me to serve, not to lord over. He the lord. 
He the king. Okay, keep reading. Okay, 27. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be to be to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So let's see the example of Jesus. So Paul, so Peter said that we supposed to be an example, and we read that Jesus is our example. So he even took it even further. Not only should you be a servant, you should be willing to be a slave. To who? To the people that you that you that, that I give you to be their servant to. You, there's no depth that which I should go that 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 I should not give up myself for you to get this word. If you need me to sit with you every day, I should better sacrifice because God has been that good to me. Mother Gosa was the first one here, and I, like I told her. It don't make no difference to where there's one or two. I'm going to teach because God has been that good to me. God has been so good that I understand the slave mentality. It's not a degradation. It's actually an elevation. Because if we go back to 1 Peter and we start 5, it, it says, that's when it says that humble yourself. And then in due time, he will exalt you. Well, the thing about it is the, when I go from servant to slave, exaltation coming. Elevation is coming. Revelation of who I am in Christ Jesus comes by my willingness to, to be a slave. Because if he didn't come to get served and he's God Almighty, then who am I to sit here? I'm supposed to get served. Okay? All right. Let's look at, we're going to look at one more passage, then we're going to be done. Go to uh, 42. Yeah, go to uh da, 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 da. go go to Mark. Jackie, you can do Mark. Go to Mark 10. Say it's the same situation, but it's just, let's see what, what may be different in the writing. Start at uh 42, Mark 10 and 42. Cause it starts off and Jesus called them together. Mark 10 and 42. Uh-huh. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord over them. Okay, that's the same. Go ahead. And their great ones exercise authority over them. That's the same. Go ahead. But it shall not be among you. Mm -hmm. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. Okay. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. Okay, now only thing has changed is you slaves of all. All everybody in the world know all that the Father has given you to serve. No partiality. You read that in James, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have any partiality amongst you guys. I love you and will serve you all the same. Okay. I, I don't really have no favorites because I'd love to throw all of y'all under the bus and make y'all do stuff. <laughs> Ask y'all to do stuff. I don't mean make as in compulsion, but, you know, I ain't got no problem with saying, hey, you do this, you go ahead, you do this. I, it don't make no difference to me because what I understand is, like I say, all of you are part of the body and getting you out of comfort zone is giving you opportunities to do stuff you don't think you can do. I'm trying to get rid of ants out your head. That's what I'm trying to do. I ain't trying to embarrass you. Well, how can you be embarrassed with a congregation like ours? I could get it if you were somewhere else. But we don't do that to people. Not up in here. And, and if I thought you were embarrassing somebody or, I, or say we were embarrassed, I'd be the first one to jump in. First of all, if you're embarrassed, I apologize. And second of all, if somebody embarrasses you, I'm going to reprimand them because they ain't got no business doing that. Okay? If you can't read and you don't want to read the scripture, just tell me. Well, let's do it. If you don't want to do that, can you pray? And don't tell me you can't pray. I don't even want to hear that. I don't care if you say two words. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, that's all God gave you. I get it. You know, not on a compulsion. All right. Go go to Luke. Mother Ghost, and you go to Luke. Luke chapter 22 at verse 25.
Mm -hmm. Start at verse 25. That's fine. And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lord over them. So we we went all the way went there from from rulers to kings. Okay. So 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 Luke is telling saying the kings. Okay, go ahead. The kings of the Gentiles, unbelievers, exercise authority over them. Go ahead. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. Are called benefactors. What they're saying is, though, this is how they run it. Their job is to take care of the king. You see what I'm saying? Those who they lord over benefit them. Now, that's that's church hated. That's the church we know about. Your job for the anniversary is to take care of me. Put me in the hot seat and decorate the seat and and, and run up at some point in time and hand me some checks. That, that ain't what we supposed to be doing. You are not my benefactors. Okay? Okay? You're, I, I benefit because you're here and you want... Yeah, no, that ain't how that works. Go ahead. But ye shall not do so. But for he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doeth serve. So in other words, now in Luke he breaks it down to let you be the one who be the not the chief, but be the Indian, basically. Be the one who's willing to be the server. Mm -hmm. Be the one who's willing to let somebody else eat first. Mm -hmm. Why you got to eat first? Why you got to sit at the chief tables? Remember part of that partiality passage is. We welcome them because they got nice clothes on and we sit them at the, at the front, at the, at the tables, at the banquets. And they look forward. And see, what happens is when, when a pastor is out of balance of God, he expects all that when he walks through the door. And if you don't recognize him and respect him and lead him up to the chief table, he got a, he got a problem. And she got a real problem. Because the she's that are doing this, the women, they're battling two things. They want the same respect as the who. So they battling that. Then they battling this. So that's why you kind of see a lot of times with them an overbearing, obvious, like I'm the whatever quote you want to put in between. And if you don't call me that, something wrong with you. Because don't you recognize I'm equal with the men and I deserve it because I got the title. That's not a servant. That's a dictator. That's leading by compulsion. You're stressing me out because you want to make me call you a title. Why don't you lead me and I'll get comfortable calling you a title based upon what I understand the title means. See, y'all don't call me pastor because I make y'all make you call me pastor. Y'all call me a pastor because you see the, the servant in me as a pastor. And if you don't, don't call me pastor. I don't have no problem with that. I need to earn the right for you to call me that. Every day. Every day. And I don't take it lightly. That means something to me when y'all call me that because I have to serve in that capacity because God called me to it. I have to earn y'all. Y'all, I have to earn it. I have to earn it. It's not. It's not entitlement. And I earn it by teaching you the Word of God. Any other thing we do is extra. Any other good thing we do is extra. Anything we do is extra. The T-shirts and all the stuff that we have. That you know, think about. It. There's larger churches don't give away the stuff we give away to each other. <laughs> but that's extra. But that all comes under me wanting to give to you. I don't care. You know, and that's what we have to do with leadership. You got to look for leadership. You got to stress this to the people that you be around. Hey, look. Ask your class pastor these questions. When does he or she get an attitude? 
Are they really serving you or are you serving them? And if you use scripture to prove it, I know where you're going. You're going back to the Old Testament, but we in the church. Hallelujah. We're in a new dispensation. Hallelujah. And our apostle is chiefly Paul. And always Paul talks about instead of being a burden to you people, I work with my hands. Yeah. Yeah. So you can receive. See, you can receive what I'm teaching if I'm serving you versus lording over you. I'm feeding you, not forcing you. And that's the difference. You look for leaders who want to feed, not be fed. You look for leaders that don't want to fleece, but they want to feed. You look for a shepherd that's like the chief shepherd. Then when he comes back, and first, first let's go back to Peter and we're done. And then I'm going to have y'all just read through it. And then we're going to start on 2 Peter next week. But you have a leader that's willing to suffer and humble himself and wait. And then get exalted. And if, that's the, and if the exaltation don't happen till I get where I'm going, that's fine. But the key is, am I honest enough and have enough integrity with the word of God and realize that my purpose is, is to feed you the word so that it can edify your body, your spiritual body, that you may grow into knowledge of Christ, and that you'll be confident enough in what you know about the word of God and your own salvation and your own revelations and experiences with God, that you will go out and witness to somebody. That's why I tell people, get out your comfort zone. It ain't, it ain't that I want you to preach, and I, and, I, and I wanted to make that clear on Sunday. It's not that I want you to preach. Some of you, that's, that's not your gift. I know that. Even to teach, it's not your gift. I know that. Mm -hmm. But it may be just getting out your comfort zone. Uh, for, not for y'all, but coming to church on time for some of us. Listening on the Bible study. Telling somebody about Christ. One of our great, one of our young men members, men members told me that he was listening to the, uh, the, the teachings on suffering and one of his co-workers was kind of listening over his shoulder and then he was able to talk to him about suffering and he said he couldn't believe what he knew. You really won't know what you know until you try to teach it to somebody else. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. You won't really know and you'll be surprised. The Bible is true. He will bring back to remembrance the stuff that I've taught you. Yeah. In a conversation, you'll, start, you, you'll be laughing at yourself talking about, I sound like pastor. Yeah, where that come from? And hold on. And it's it funny about it. When you say it, as soon as you say it, you're going to forget it. you be like, did I say? They're going to be like, you said, duh, 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 duh. you be like, what? Did I really say that? Did I really say that? Okay. So uh, we done for today. Uh, I, again, you. how would you say? You want to keep reading some more? Oh uh, well, no. We gonna go to five, and you guys gonna finish it up. Oh, okay. Yeah, you guys gonna finish up chapter five. Okay, okay. okay. that's the main point because then it goes into some some kids and parents and all that stuff, and we didn't cover that a lot. Okay. So so, but I wanted to again hone in on leadership because leadership is so important, and who you decide to follow and listen to, and and observe and 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 put in your ear gate and your eye gate. If they are not first of all the word. But, but my job is also remove the ants, whatever they may be when it comes to your relationship with God. What's stopping you is normally what's in your head. Bad doctrine, bad religion, bad practices, and just holding on to what you used to do 50 years ago. And, it's, and again, I'm not knocking it. It's just that you should be evolving and getting older. All right? All right. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So you can listen to it again tonight. I might say something different, but yeah, for, for pretty much I'm going to teach the same thing. Oh, grace, Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your people. Continue to teach us how to be better leaders and better followers. Teach us how to always be servants and possibly slaves that we may use you as the example that we need to carry a cross and carry the cup. The cup is a cup of suffering. Lord, we thank you for learning. Let the revelation of suffering continue to grow in our hearts as we go into 2021, the year of learning how to suffer well. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
We worship at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ Building, located at 2301 Wallace Avenue Overland, Missouri, 63114. The times of worship are 8.30 a.m. on Sunday and 7 p.m. on Tuesday. You may also join us on Facebook at the Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship page or the Walk in Truth Radio Network YouTube page. All are welcome and we look forward to teaching you the truth about God, teaching you to be committed, accountable, and responsible to the things of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for tuning in to today's message. We hope that you have been blessed and encouraged. Continue to listen, subscribe and share on our YouTube page and your favorite podcast platform where we could be reached. Consider donating to this ministry on your favorite platform of choice, Venmo, Cash App or PayPal. We want to thank you for all of your support and especially your prayers. Stay tuned, be encouraged and be blessed.